Oops, I'm just clicking on a couple of buttons there. There we go. Now I can focus on all of our attendees. Uh, and on our guest, Bill. So I'm Christy with the Brampton Board of Trade, and this is a part of our expert series. Uh, so when the pandemic hit uh, at the beginning of March, we took the opportunity to reach out to some of our members, um, most of our members, about 500, and say, what um, what do you need from us? What do you need um, to, to know? What do we need to advocate for? Um, and we had some really, really good feedback. So what we did is we started our expert series here, and we've brought in experts from uh, all different sectors, learning about all different kinds of information. So uh, last week we had the City of Brampton planning team. We had some employment lawyers. Uh, we've talked about um, increasing your SEO. We've talked about e-commerce. We've talked about HR questions. So all of those videos are available at bramptonbot.com slash expert series. Uh, and what it's done is create this really great library of information for all of our members. So that's our expert series. So I encourage you to check that out. Uh, also check out bramptonbot.com slash COVID-19. Uh, we've been putting together a really great collection of resources, information. And then you can also check out um, bramptonbot.com slash reopening resources. And here uh, you can get a list of member businesses who have PPE and signage um, who are doing sanitizing. We've got some great resources there for you as well. So I encourage you to check that out. So today we are talking about cybersecurity. And so it's identifying the risks and implementing solutions. And we are happy to be joined by, now I did ask Bill how to pronounce his last name, I think three times, and I'm probably still going to butcher it, but I'm going to try anyway. Bill Boivenu. I didn't get that right, did I, Bill? It's close. It's pretty good. Boivenu. Boivenu. Okay. I'm, I'm here with Bill <laughs> from BSC Solutions Group, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about cybersecurity. So we're uh, excited to hear about that. So Bill is the owner and president since 1984. Uh, Brampton Business, we were just talking about some of the, uh, you know, the, the roads and the changes that we've seen over uh, the last uh, 20 to 30 years in Brampton. And Bill has over 30 years of providing uh, managed IT services to organizations across the GTA. Um, he's a Microsoft partner since 1999 and ha also has a great collection of videos and blogs um, all on his own to, uh, that we can add to our collection as well. And BSC is a fairly new member of the Brampton Board of Trade as well, and we're excited to uh, have them here today. So welcome, Bill. Thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks so much, Christy. Um, yes, we've, uh, BSC has been a Brampton-based company since 1969. <clears throat> so uh, originally uh, founded... Uh, uh, but as a TV repair company. And then uh, I joined in the early 80s in 81 and uh, liked the company so much, I bought it. Okay. So, uh, so I've, been, uh, I've been running it since the mid 80s. And uh, yeah. so we were still doing home electronics back then, but um, we transitioned into the uh, computer business in the early 90s. And so, uh, so we've been doing uh, computer equipment sales and support uh, for, uh, for over almost about 30 years now. Okay. And then tell me a little bit about how the, uh, the pandemic has changed business for you. Well, we've, um, we've helped a lot of our clients uh, transition their staff to, uh, to work from home. You know, so okay. we, you know, a lot of them had that ability already, but uh, you know, many of them didn't. You know, they, their workers were typical and, and sort of worked from the office or, or the manufacturing facility, whatever it might be. Yep. And so, uh, so again, in March, uh, we helped many, many of them to get their staff uh, set up and working from home. And, um, you know, we're seeing, um, we're seeing a mix now, you know, some, some have returned back to, you know, their, their old working habits and the, the employees go back to work uh, to the office. And we still have though many of them where the staff are continuing to work from home. Yeah, and I think that, you know, it, lots of people are seeing that, that sort of that hybrid model of, um, you know, we've got some people from home, some people uh, from the office, some people somewhere, you know, in between. And, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting, I think, over the next few uh, weeks and months as our work, as our, hopefully the schools open up and, um, you know, kids go back to school safely. And we, we see families trying to adjust as well to what that might look like. Um, so you've told us a little bit, um, you know, about sort of how you've adjusted during the pandemic. But uh, what, what does managed IT services provider mean? And, you know, what, what, are, you, what are you doing for the companies? Other than solving problems, <laughs> well, um, yeah, for yes, we, we we strictly deal with uh, business to business, so we don't we don't do any consumer work. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, so as a managed services provider, what we will do is act uh, typically as the outsourced IT department for, for a business or an organization. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have other clients that are, that are bigger that do have their own IT department. And for those clients, we will typically do special projects and, you know, just bring our expertise for just a very, uh, very specific types of technology they want help with. But the bulk of our clients do not have an IT department. And mm -hmm. so we will help them to plan and manage all of their IT needs. So that will, that would start right from supplying them with equipment. And so we, you know, we spec out and source the appropriate equipment for that particular employee. We will then configure it, <clears throat> deliver it, install it, and, you know, set it up for that employee. And then we would manage that equipment during its entire life cycle. Uh, and at the end of the life cycle, we do it all again. You know, so, so we'll take the old equipment away and we'll bring in new equipment to replace it. And our focus, uh, our focus is kind of on back end infrastructure and communications. So anything doing to do with connectivity, uh, including, you know, telephones, uh, uh, mobile computers, you know, VPNs, uh, remote workers, um, uh, anything to do with, with communication would be a, a core strength for us. <clears throat> and of course, Nowadays, you know, we have to uh, we have to provide cybersecurity guidance for our clients, um, mm -hmm. as far as helping them to protect their their knowledge, you know, that they've gained, you know, their their their, their sort of intellectual knowledge that each business possesses, <clears throat> and so so we would uh, we would help them to manage that, and that would include disaster recovery, backup solutions, and again anything around uh, allowing their staff to communicate and access information. Great. So a really uh, full service, which is nice, because to be able to have a full time person on staff to do all of those things would be uh, really hard to do. So especially for the small to medium enterprises where they don't have an IT department, you're really filling a gap there. Sure. I mean, we have uh, we have some clients as small as, you know, five or 10 users mm -hmm. and, and uh, we have other clients that, you know, 100 plus. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, th that would be we would fall anywhere in that range as far as yep. our client sizes. Uh, and then we have, you know, again, some that are even larger and they would just use us for certain projects. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I usually say that, you know, one thing about being um, a, a business owner, particularly a small business owner, is that you have to be the expert in everything. Um, you know, you're the HR specialist, you're the product specialist, you're the salesperson, you're the, you know, you're, you're the fill in the gaps on everything. So this, a company like yours is an opportunity where you don't have to be the IT expert. Well, and, and IT has, has become much more complex over the years. Mm -hmm. you know, there, there was a time, you know, 20 years ago when you could just run down to Future Shop and buy a computer and bring it back to your office and set it up and your employee would be good to go. Yes. But, uh, but now, you know, when we set up a new computer, we have a long checklist of tasks that we perform on that computer. Mm -hmm. and, and for a new employee, the, the, you know, again, setting up all the appropriate security and yeah. access to data and information for them. So, it's really, um, it's really, the IT is not really something that an owner can just dabble in anymore. Um, right. And so often when we do pick up a new client, it, it may be the owner that has been taking care of the IT, uh, mm -hmm. or maybe they've had a, you know, just a, a small, you know, you know, one man, you know, consultant working from his home. And it just, as the businesses grow, it, it becomes too complex. And so they need to bring us in to, to help them to, to manage it properly. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so, you know, obviously we're talking about cybersecurity today, and um, that is an area of specialty uh, for your business, which is great. Um, mm -hmm. What is the greatest um, cybersecurity threat? Um, and when we look at sort of, you know, the biggest threat, but also what are some solutions that business owners can uh, implement to help uh, protect <clears throat> themselves from that? Well, the, the greatest threat is basically the people. You know, the, you know, so so we've all heard about the phishing campaigns that in the news that we've read about, and and so most breaches are taking place because uh, I'll say an employee, but it, it could be the owner too. You know, like it, because a person gets fooled into clicking on something that um, that they shouldn't click on, but you know, some of them are very well disguised, and uh, and then um, you know because of that, it, it snowballs, and so. Maybe, you know, it's, it's a combination of people clicking on things they shouldn't, and then you end up with software on your computer that captures information. Uh, what goes hand in hand with the phishing is, uh, is weak passwords mm. and reused passwords. You know, so, so again, you know, weak passwords are pretty apparent, you know, so, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six is not a good password, you know, 
password is not a good password. password. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, these are common, common passwords. Um, and then uh, even if you do have a complex password, if you're reusing that password on other sites, you could be breached. So you may not, you may not be breached by phishing, but uh, maybe someone else gets fished, you know, and, and then, or there, you know, and then there's a breach of a site. So, so let's just say, you know, we'll pick on, you know, I don't know, UPS, like, so let's, let's assume, you know, UPS had a breach and you were using the same username and password for your UPS account as you were using for your Office 365 account. Now that username and password for your Office 365 account is known. Right. And yet you, you yourself have not been breached, mm. but because you reused your password elsewhere, you, you're now vulnerable. Right. So, so right. That, that would be, you know, a combination of phishing and yep. poor, poor password management. Those, those are the two most, uh, uh, most high risk areas that, you, that you're going to experience a breach. So then in terms of how, um, I don't, uh, you know, how I avoid phishing or being phished, I guess, Mm -hmm. um, you know, what are some things that I can do to make sure that I'm not clicking on anything that I shouldn't? What are some of the, uh, the red flags I should be watching for? Well, um, there are services available where uh, you can, uh, an, a business can sign up and uh, their employees then receive phishing training on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of that training is that these services will send your employees uh, fake emails with phishing links in them to see whether or not the employees get tricked. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, and, and then that is an indicator that that employee needs to have some more training. Right. Okay. So, so certainly training, training employees is, is, uh, is, is one way to, um, to work around it. Um, and then there are also uh, password managers that can be used. Um, you know, Keeper, LastPass, uh, Dashlane. There's quite a number of password managers that are available in the marketplace. And so uh, by having employees use password managers, that will help to ensure that they're using unique and complex passwords for, for different sites. Yeah, because trying to remember some of those, um, you know, like the Apple generated passwords that have got 15 characters in them, that's a little tricky. It's impossible. Uh, I, yes. <laughs> yeah. I have been known to reuse a password or two myself, so. Yeah, yes. Well, I, I mean, everybody, you know, it's always preached to everybody in the media, you know, don't reuse your passwords. But if you don't have a password manager, you're going to, you have to reuse your password. You know, like, how is it possible to remember a randomly generated, you know, 20 character password and then, you know, maybe have 30 or 40 of those? When you can't even remember where you put your car keys some days, right? It, yes. Yeah. That's not just me. I know that's not just me. But, you know, um, password managers, though, people will you know, are reticent to use them because they're hesitant, mm -hmm. you know, I'm kind of putting everything in this password manager. And if someone breaks into that, I'm doomed, right? Which, which right. is totally true. So, mm -hmm. you know, the password managers, um, you know, you want to make sure that you're using a very good password for you to get into that password manager. Right. Um, the password management companies all release updates all the time to make their product more secure. And then of course they have, um, a feature that you can turn on to help protect your account called uh, MFA, multi-factor authentication, or, oh, yes. or two-step authentication is another name for it, or two-factor. So, so again, that's another tool that you can be using to protect not only your password manager, but really any website that you go to that supports that feature, you should be turning it on. And so, you know, that's where you're, um, you'll have an app on your cell phone that will generate a new code every 30 seconds. And so when you go to log into the, a certain website, so an example would be TD Canada Trust. So they, they have this feature now. In their case, they don't do it with an app, they do it with texting. So they will, they will send your right. cell phone a text, okay? Mm -hmm. um, my recommendation is wherever possible to use the, the third party app instead of the mm -hmm. text. Because okay. of course, if your phone gets hijacked, the people will, will now get your text message and they'll have that code, right? right. So, so I, I, would, I would like to see the texting methodology go away mm -hmm. and strictly rely on, on a third party app on your phone. So, right. but, but anyways, you know, there's a, so there's, you know, use a password manager, use, the, use an MFA tool, don't reuse your passwords. Okay. Um, now you mentioned a couple of uh, password managers there. You said Keeper, LastPass, and there was a third one that I that I missed that you mentioned there's, there. There's so many Dashlane. I mean, you, if you Google it, you'll come up with a dozen. But those those are those are three of the top. I mean, there's there's probably two or three other top ones as well. Yeah. 
class. Yeah. And see, that that's helpful because, you know, for me to go and Google one, I don't know that, uh, I don't know that I would sort of trust anything that I, any information that I would get about a, a password manager, not from a reliable source. Sure. So uh, having that, you know, those recommendations is uh, really smart. Well, again, this is where our, our, our role, you know, comes in with our clients, right? So we like mm -hmm. to, uh, we like to think that we're their trusted advisor. Mm -hmm. right? So, so, um, and, and, you know, once we, when, once we have a client, we do, you know, very quickly gain their trust. And, uh, right. and so, you know, they'll come to us, you know, with questions, you know, what should I do about this? What should I do about that? And, and so again, we're happy to, to share our expertise and, and, and guide them. Um, you know, maybe they're buying some, you know, new accounting software or some new manufacturing software, which we don't sell, but right. we're, we're still happy to give them guidance and, and help them, you know, make the best choice for, for their company or organization. Yeah, that's great. So password manager, we need to make sure that we're training our employees uh, on how to recognize uh, phishing attempts. Um, and we need to make sure that we are engaging all of our MFAs. Correct. Correct. Excellent. Okay. So in, in addition to that, you know, um, so that, you know, that's that, and that um, can maybe work, you know, even in terms of the office setting when everybody is there and closer and, you know, even with the phishing uh, training, um, we've got people all over the place right now. You know, we talked at the beginning of some people are at home, some people are in the office. Are we worried about people doing work not uh, on their office network? What are the risks uh, with doing so and how can I manage those? Well, there, there definitely are significant risks. Um, so again, um, with the, uh, the MFA, you know, so for, for people that are connecting remotely to the office, you know, right, so they're gonna maybe connect to their desktop computer at the office, or maybe they're connecting to a server at the office. Mm -hmm. uh, so many of them may connect via a VPN, uh, right, a virtual private network. Yep. And so if that's the case, um, depending on the firewall that you've got, but certainly, you know, we, we typically sell SonicWall ourselves. And, and one of the, the features that SonicWall uh, has is that on VPN connections, we can enable MFA. So, okay. so again, for anybody that wants to connect to the office, you need to know your VPN username, your VPN password, and then you need to type in an MFA code. So that's going to, once again, make it very difficult for someone to hack in as you or your employee because mm -hmm. you need to know all three bits of information. And the MFA code changes every 30 seconds. Right. So, so again, anyone working from home, try to use MFA wherever possible. There are other products out there, uh, some remote control software that people may have, have on their desktop. So things like uh, TeamViewer or LogMeIn. And mm -hmm. again, those, uh, those tools all support MFA. So, so again, if you're using TeamViewer to connect to a, a computer in the office, you can uh, go into the settings of, you know, of that application and you can turn on, you know, MFA and, and make it a requirement. So, so MFA for anybody connecting remotely, um, you know, the other concerns with people working at home is ideally you would prefer that they be working on um, a, a business supplied computer. All right. With the idea that that, that, you know, corporate computer has all the latest patches on it. it has a supported operating system, it has antivirus. You know, if people are going home and they're being allowed to work on their home computer to connect to the office, uh, that would be a big concern for me uh, because we don't know who's been using that computer. You know, have, have the kids been using it? Do they play games on there? Or are there viruses on that computer? Um, is the computer running Windows 7? You know, because Windows 7 is no longer supported and so there's no patches or updates for that. So, so again, if you're sending your staff home to work, it's, it's great that they're, you know, being generous. The employee says, it's okay, I'll use my home computer. That's fine. It saves the corporation some money, but it, you could be exposing a corporation to a, to a big risk. So in the long run, it may not actually save any money at all. Well, of course, yes. I mean, if that computer, you know, leads to a breach or leads to ransomware, you know, for, for a one to $2,000, you know, laptop for that employee, that's going to pale in comparison with, with what you're going to have to pay to, to recover your missing data. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, I, we're fortunate here that, you know, we, we do have laptops that we take back and forth, but I hadn't thought of that, of course, because my children do use my computer and, you know, they're playing Roblox or, um, you know, whatever else they're doing on there. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's another actually good piece of uh, information there is to make sure that, 
you do have access to a work computer to take home with you for right. and and for you know that work days. computer you know there should be a, a policy in place such that that work computer is for use by that employee only right so right. so it's you know you, sh you you shouldn't you know let your kids you know use it to you know to play you know online games or anything like that it should right. be just just for corporate use yeah no that's uh that's good and i think that even the schools when they give computers to the kids as well through uh, you know when they have their chromebooks they they say the same thing now chromebooks are a little bit different because they're not set up for that but i think that's um you know there's almost a good policy manual piece to have in there sure that's great and, and that's one of the things again that we help with our, our clients we'll help provide them with some um you know some basic templates for you know acceptable use documents as far as technology goes for for their employees yeah well that's helpful um, I have encouraged um, our audience to go ahead and ask questions. And the one comment I got back was that you're answering questions faster than they can think of them, so, which is good. <laughs> um, I do want to highlight, so this, this session today is a little bit of a teaser for um, a more in-depth session that we're going to have on cybersecurity with yourself on September 22nd. Um, so we're, we are calling that the cybersecurity defenses hackers don't want you to know. So if you were to give me an elevator speech about, um, you know, what we're going to learn at that session on September 22nd, what would it be? Well, I, I think we've been giving it the last 20 minutes. So, uh, you know, so, <laughs> so again, we're going to talk about, um, you know, training your employees and, and, and again, particularly employees working from home and what some of the concerns are. Um, so there are, there are more concerns as, as well, besides the ones that I've addressed. Of course. Yeah. Um, and we're also uh, going to, I'm going to give some examples there of, of a breach. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll walk through a breach that, that we've seen occurring, uh, particularly on Office 365. Okay. Um, yep. And uh, and we'll talk about, again, um, protecting your data. Mm. Excellent. Um, a, a couple of questions here that are coming in. Um, the threat landscape, you know, is, you know, we, we've, we've heard about, you know, ransomware and, and the phishing and are things changing, you know, on a fairly regular basis? You know, is phishing still going to be the... The concern a few months from now or is there something new in the works that we should be preparing for? Phishing has ramped up since March you know when everybody went home uh, over the summer fish, phishing attacks have increased by um, by over 50 percent. Oh wow. So, uh, so oh, wow. phishing attacks continue to be the favorite target of, uh, of the bad actors to mm -hmm. try to get into, into the corporate networks. Yeah, and um, they can. It, I've uh, there's definitely some that uh, I have received here, and um, it, it looks like it's coming from the boss, and it asks a question in the same tone that he would. Um, but you know, it's paying attention to where it, like where the email's coming from. I, you know, that's one way that we've done it here, and we've had great discussions here about it as well. Sure, and hover, hover over the link to kind of see what the landing page says it is, right? So, mm -hmm. but you know, a lot of the. The phishing attempts we're seeing now, you know, they're they're not the same as we saw, you know, five years ago, right? With with uh, where they were they were often easy to spot because they had a lot of grammatical errors in them, you know, a lot of misspelling, right. yes. And, yes. and you know, it, it, the messages often just didn't make sense, so it was really easy to determine it, it was fake. But mm -hmm. um, now the these messages are much more sophisticated, and these companies are doing research, you know, on the on the organizations that they're targeting. So mm -hmm. as you said, when you get the messages. The tone could be the same, you know, it, it, it causes you to pause, well, hopefully you pause, you know, right? right. Yes. But, um, but yeah, some of them, uh, some of them now are, 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 these are quite intelligent people. And, you know, these aren't just your, your kids goofing around, like these are, this is organized crime trying to make money. Yeah. And uh, that's unfortunate. Um, so another question that uh, has come in here is a lot of companies are using different platforms like Zoom and we're using Zoom here today sure. uh, for meetings that can be recorded and we are recording today's meeting so that we can share that information afterwards but lots of meetings we don't want to be recorded. Mm -hmm. um, do we need to be worried when we're using technology like Zoom or Teams or some of the other platforms that the meetings are being recorded and potentially sensitive conversations are available outside of the organization? Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily be concerned about people outside of the organization. If if you're if you're the host of the meeting, then you know you're going to control whether it's being recorded. Mm -hmm. um, if you're if you're the guest of the meeting, then absolutely the person at the other end could be recording it. Mm -hmm. now, typically, if you're looking at uh, popular apps such as Teams and Zoom, they will um, they will make it pretty evident on the session that you're in that the set that it's being recorded. Mm -hmm. uh, but but yeah, absolutely, that is a concern, you know, um, mm -hmm. that other people could be recording it, but it's going to be other people that are hosting the, the, the meetings. Right. 
Um, yes, and I know at the beginning, uh, you know, when everyone sort of jumped on Zoom right away, there was lots of talk about, you know, Zoom bombing and, right. you know, it not being secure. And um, my understanding is that they've worked really hard to alleviate any of that stress um, by making it more secure. I, I agree. I think they've made a number of changes. Uh, I mean, the, there's always more that can be done. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, so Zoom, Zoom is pretty good. I mean, Zoom works really well for webinars, right? When you've got, you know, mm -hmm. multiple people viewing, you know, a small number of hosts. Teams, of course, has become very popular as it's bundled in with Office 365. Um, and so that one is a lot easier now for a lot of different people to be recording uh, as far as the employees of the, of the business. Um, now Teams by default, when you record it, um, the application is, um, is kind of, it's locked within Office 365. And there currently is no method to actually share it to outside uh, people. Mm -hmm. Now, at some point that could change, um, but at least as far as Teams goes, if you have a coworker or someone's recording it, it would be very hard for them to accidentally, sh you know, share it outside of the organization. Right. Yeah, and it's um, you know, we we've, we've used Teams a little bit here, but I, and I understand that's one of the workshops that you do deliver on a regular basis as well as how to really use Teams because there's so much functionality in there that um, I think most of us have just barely scratched the surface of how sure, to. Sure, really I mean, yeah, Teams can be used for a lot more than just having web meetings, right? It, mm -hmm. There can be a lot of information that you can share with your your coworkers, and um, and that information can be. Um, segmented, you know, so you can control who you're sharing it with. You can have different teams that have different members as far as security and, and whatnot. So, so we've actually done quite a bit of work of, you know, deploying teams and configuring it for clients and, and helping them to take advantage of it. Nice. Um, so out of uh, respect for everybody's time today, I want to sort of head towards our wrap up. If there was, um, I guess, sort of a few words of advice that you would pass along to our listeners right now, sort of next steps to take or first steps in terms of protecting um, their information and their data, uh, what would they be? Well, you know, make sure that your equipment and, and infrastructure is, is, uh, is up to date, you know, so again, patching is very important. So, so a lot of these phishing attempts, they will get in because they'll find a hole in, in your Windows computer, you know, Windows 7 or even Windows 10. Uh, so make sure your patching is always up to date. Uh, you, you know, you need to have up to date antivirus. You kind of need a, a checklist of, of requirements, right? So, so, you know, firewall, antivirus, updated patches. So those are things that you have to have in place. And then you can expand and then start to look at helping to protect your people. So those, so you've got to protect your equipment and protect mm -hmm. your people, two different sides of the same coin. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, thank you. And um, I appreciate your insight, Bill. It's, um, you know, like I said, people, people try and sort of be in um, business or sort of be an expert in everything. I don't need to be an IT expert or a cybersecurity expert. I'm going to leave that to you guys. Um, I am going to put your website uh, here in the chat so that people can get in touch with you um, when they have some more questions. Uh, in addition to that, I want to uh, encourage everyone to join us on September 22nd. Um, you can register for that. Um, I don't think we have the event live yet, but we will over the next day or so. Um, but September 22nd at 11 o'clock, and we'll do a little bit more in-depth uh, with Bill talking about cybersecurity and some next steps, again, that you're going to want to take. So make sure to register for that event. Now, other events that we have coming up. Uh, every Wednesday morning, we are getting together at 8 a.m. for our Wednesday wake up. And that is uh, an hour-long networking opportunity. So come talk about your business, bring your um, sort of biggest challenges, solutions, uh, questions that you have for the week. And uh, every time we have one of those networking sessions, everyone leaves with new ideas and new connections. And it's a, a really great time to chat. Um, two other things that I want to bring to attention to our viewers here. Um, Thursday morning, we have our business development network meeting. So that's part of our peer-to-peer -peer networks, which um, coming out of the pandemic, a new series of networks that we have brought together. So we're focusing specifically on business development. So if you're business development staff, I invite them to join us Wednesday, uh, Thursday morning at eight o'clock and you can register for that online as uh, well at BramptonBOT.com. Um, and again, be able to specifically right now, how are we doing business development? I think our, our days of door to door sales are uh, behind us, but what does it look like now? Um, you know, coming, I can't even say coming out of the pandemic, but in our next phase of the pandemic. 
one more date that I do want to share is October 20th. So our business awards will be happening October 20th virtually. Um, there will be dinner from local restaurants uh, available and we are celebrating uh, the brightest and the best businesses across our city. So make sure that, uh, you're watching for more information on that. Uh, and other than that, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Make sure you check out BrampttonBOT.com. And Bill, I really want to thank you for sharing your expert knowledge with us. Um, I appreciate it. And I think that you have really tapped into a lot of questions that people have. And we'll look forward to the next opportunity to have those answered. Thanks for having me. Great. Thank you very much. And have a great rest of the day, everyone.